Hey guys, this is Austin. Welcome to my favorite tech under $200. Kicking things off, we have the Sony MDR450 headphones. Pop open the box and you'll see they're actually pretty good looking. I'm usually not a huge fan of on-ear headphones, but the 450s are comfortable even for longer periods. The giant extra bass on the box might give you a hint to how these sound, but for the price I'm impressed. They really shine when listening to bass heavy music like rap, with a serious punch in the low end. They do overpower the mids a bit, but they're absolutely fine for normal use. The cups rotate to make travel easier, and there's a built-in mic and controls for taking calls on both iPhone and Android. For less than $50, the MDR450s are pretty awesome. Next up, we have the new Viewmaster Virtual Reality Viewer, and big thanks to Mattel for making this video possible. Pair this with an iOS or Android smartphone, and you'll have a serious VR headset. It works with Google Cardboard, but it's a lot nicer with the classic Viewmaster look. In the box, it comes with a starter pack, but you can expand it with separate packs like National Geographic Wildlife. These are AR discs, which you can look at to check out the experience. Just download the Viewmaster app for your pack, slot your phone into the mount, and you're good to go. It's a pretty awesome experience. You can explore the wildlands of Africa, or my personal favorite is the Space Pack. Even if you've used other VR headsets, the Viewmaster is solid, but if you've never tried virtual reality, it is straight up awesome. Something I use almost every day is the Samsung T1 Portable SSD. This little guy is absolutely tiny and is great for moving around files quickly. It's based on USB 3.0 and with read and write speeds of over 400 megabytes per second, it's perfect for giant file transfers. I keep my Steam library on it to easily move between computers as well as editing 4K video on it. For less than $150, this is probably the most useful thing on this list. Continuing on the storage train, we have the SanDisk Ultra Flash Drive. This is also USB 3.0 and even smaller than the T1, but it has a trick up its sleeve. It also features a micro USB port. You can plug one end into your computer to dump incredibly important files and then plug it into an Android phone where it should work just fine. It's simple, but for less than $15, it can really come in handy. Next, we have the ASUS Chromebook C201. I recently did a more in-depth video on this, but for less than $200, it's hard to argue with an actual laptop. It has an 11.6 inch screen, which is totally usable and a nice thin design. The basics are all here. The keyboard is properly sized and easy to type on, and the trackpad could embarrass a lot of Windows laptops. It's running Chrome OS, which while not as full featured as Windows, makes a lot of sense for a laptop like this, especially if you already use web apps like Gmail and Google Docs. While it might not be super cool, the new 7-inch Amazon Fire tablet is impressive for another reason, price. At $50, you shouldn't expect much, but this really isn't bad. It has a decent 7-inch screen and average build quality, but seriously, this is $50. It runs Amazon's Fire OS, which is vaguely based on Android. There's tons of Amazon stuff pre-installed, but the App Store has a decent selection as well. You're missing Google Apps, but the browser works fine for things like YouTube, and it even has a pair of cameras. You might not be able to take the greatest selfies in the world, but did I mention this is a $50 tablet? You'll have to deal with sponsored wallpapers, which is probably a big reason why Amazon was able to build a usable tablet for so cheap, but even if you only used it as a Kindle, it would be worth the price. So what's your favorite piece of tech on this list? Let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next one.